neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer, and today we're taking a look and installing the Roadmaster Exact Center Steering Stabilizer on a 2005 Workhorse W Series. So we're gonna go here on our test course, and uh, I'm gonna just kind of let the steering wheel naturally kind of do what it needs to do. Um, now we have some off-center bumps here, and uh, we'll see if the steering wheel moves. And a little bit of jostling there. Uh, but what I'm gonna do here is a long, wide sweeper. And then as I kind of get to the straight portion of it, I'm gonna kind of just let the steering wheel center itself. And it does a pretty good job, but you can see we're still kind of angling off. So I have to kind of reel it back a little bit just to straighten that out, which doesn't seem like much, but we're also doing 10 miles per hour in a parking lot. I'm not necessarily on the main roads at a higher speed where it's gonna be a little bit more apparent so I'm gonna do a long sweeper here and then I'm just gonna hands off the wheel and see how it actually uh, you know, responds to straightening back out. And this is, I've never done one of these installations, so I'm pretty curious to see the difference that it makes and, and really just how much better of a driving experience it becomes. So I'm gonna swing wide here. Again, I'm doing about, yeah, I'd say about 10 miles per hour. And then just as I let it naturally go, it definitely we're still kind of pulling to that left, which is to kind of be expected. That's the stock steering. So let's, uh, we'll take it back out on the test course here. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of slalom action. And that's where I think we're really gonna see a big difference because each time we're having to kind of counter steer to bring that back to a center. Whereas hopefully the steering stabilizer does the work for us and just makes it a little bit better. So as I cut here, it kind of comes back. As I cut here, it kind of comes back. But it's definitely on its own, it's not gonna straighten out. You can see the steering wheel still point me in this direction here. So as I accelerate, it's still wanting to pull to that right. So hopefully we can correct that. Now, while we're out here on the test course, something that we're gonna do is we're gonna find our center of our steering wheel. And that's not gonna be how straight this is. You're gonna want this tracking as straight as possible on a flat road. And then what I'm gonna do is take a piece of tape and I'm gonna run it from the steering wheel to the dash and that's going to be our reference point and that way when we need to make adjustments we can go ahead and do that so just a nice little uh, pro tip here just to help you with it so um, we're going to go ahead and just drive straight here and i'm going to go i have a little line in the concrete that i'm going to try to follow here and just follow along with that and then see where the steering wheel naturally stays So that looks to be pretty straight here. So I'm gonna just stop, hold my steering wheel here, and then I'm just gonna take my piece of tape and again, run it just from the dash to the steering wheel, and then I'll just kind of cut down the center. But that way we can, again, line these up when we need to do our adjustments and we'll be good to go. There we are. So now it's time to take it back in the shop, get this installed and see the difference. So with our stabilizer back on, we still have our reference mark. So I'm really curious to see how this performs. And so I'm gonna go through the same kind of uh, basically path that I went before. And the main thing that I'm going to really be looking for is how quickly does this respond back and bring it back to center. And that's just gonna make that driving down the highway a lot easier. So we'll make this wide turn here. And before it would start tracking to the other side, we're gonna see what it does here. And already there is a little bit more steering feel, just a little bit more response. And that definitely comes back way faster. And I am here on a straightaway, so let's uh, get me right in the center groove here. So our steering is nice and even, it's not pulling. So that means we've adjusted properly. Now, if it is pulling to the left or right, you're just gonna adjust those U-bolts a little bit, uh, loosen those down and move that bracket and that should align your steering. So just kind of use your reference marks again. And I also recommend using a paint marker. 
underneath to just kind of mark that and then you can move the bracket. But once we have it dialed in, we're gonna see the benefits here. So doing a little bit of slalom here, it definitely wants to bring it back, especially the harder I turn, it seems like it fires back exactly where it's supposed to go. Whereas before it still kind of just drift wherever I left off with input. So pretty quickly it goes back. And as I mentioned, the steering feel is, it's more responsive. So it actually, it feels a little bit heavier, but in a good way, there's feedback. Whereas before it was just kind of loose and it kind of just felt aimless in its own way. But this definitely gives it a more car-like handling in a good way. And it's a pretty simple concept. You have a bracket here that bolts to your U-bolts and in between this bracket and the bracket that we attached here, it's just going to go along your steering. So when this is moved, it's just going to compress the nitrogen charged gas spring and that's going to just bring that back to the center each time. So it acts like suspension. So as it compresses, it's going to fight that back and put it right in the center every time. Now, as far as the construction, it's pretty simple. This is gonna be stainless steel, so it's gonna be extremely durable, especially being on the vehicle, that stainless is gonna hold up. And also where you have the gas um, cylinder here, you're going to have the boot around it, so that's gonna protect it from that road grime. Now, your brackets are also a nice black powder coat, so those are gonna hold up as well. Now, after it was installed, I was able to make some adjustments uh, on our U-bolts here just to kind of center that up a little bit by just kind of laying on my back underneath the RV without having it raised up. So installation should be about the same as well. This can be done just kind of laying underneath here. Just obviously make sure you're careful underneath. Now, speaking of the installation, let's take a look at that now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be on our passenger side on the rear portion of the front axle. And we're gonna have our U-bolt nuts here and we're gonna get those removed because our plate is going to go in place there. So these are going to be uh, a little bit uh, tricky here. So it, just because of rust, you can see I've put some penetrating oil just to kind of loosen that up. And I'm gonna be go using a 15 16 socket on my impact to kind of get these going. But you may need to uh, get some leverage here depending on you know what the underside of your RV looks like. So let's go ahead, we'll get these taken off. So now we're gonna take our plate and it should look something like this. And we're gonna slide this back over and then I'm gonna replace my hardware. Now, as far as orientation, that slot side should go towards the passenger. So just make sure that you have that in place. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get these snug down and then we're gonna come back with our torque wrench and make sure they're torqued down properly. Now we're gonna go back with our torque wrench and I'm just using the manufacturer's recommendation for their U-bolts. Uh, now if you need a torque wrench, we have these available here at E-Trailer. You can generally rent them at an auto parts store. But this is gonna make sure that these are gonna be properly tightened down, not become loose over time. <clears throat> So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my tie rod bracket and we want this hole facing towards the back and we're gonna just run our U-bolts that are supplied in the kit through here. And then I'm gonna finish these up with a flat washer and then we have nylon lock nuts here and I'm just gonna hand tighten these on um, just to kind of keep this in place and this is gonna allow for some adjustment but we'll have this mounted up at least to uh, be able to kind of determine our length. So just go through here and get our nylon lock nuts put on. So now I have my stabilizer in hand and we're gonna get this mounted up to our bracket, but we need to make sure that we're choosing the right hole in this instance here. Uh, now the Roadmaster logo is right here. We want that facing towards the front um, or close to it. So what we'll do here is kind of line this up, just kind of eyeball it. But what we're looking for is to try to make this as parallel as possible once it's mounted up. It looks like this one here is gonna be a little bit too tight and this gives us a little better um, a little more parallel to our factory uh, steering rod here. So uh, what we'll do to get this in place, pretty easy. We'll 
pass this through. And then we're gonna put a flat washer on there and then follow it up here with the stabilizer. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put another flat washer. And then we're just gonna follow that all up with a nut here. And I'm just gonna keep this finger tight for now. I'm then gonna go over to my other bracket here. And I'm gonna go ahead with my uh, bolt and flat washer and we're gonna pass this through. We're then gonna finish that with a flat washer here. Pass that through our bracket. And then again, I'm just gonna hand tighten this on there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get these tightened down and these are gonna be three quarter inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my uh, wrench up top and my socket below. Now we don't have to get too crazy here. We just kind of want it snug to where it's not just walking around like this um, because the torque setting isn't particularly high. So just kind of uh, crank this down. And the main reason that torque setting isn't high is because you still want this to be able to swivel a little bit. It does have movement. So cranking this down doesn't necessarily do anything uh, for it. In fact, it might hinder it. So get this snug. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same here on our bracket. So now with our bracket here, what I'm gonna do is just kinda, you wanna make sure it's not pulling or um, you know have too much slack. I'm just gonna kinda just push this straight up and I want this nice and level um, with our bar here. So we don't want it twisting like this. So just kind of hold this up and that bracket should be looking pretty level as well. So let's go ahead. We'll get these tightened down. Um, the torque setting is going to be the same actually for this hardware. So I'll come back with my torque wrench right now. I'm just going to kind of snug these up so it holds it in place with my 916. Now also make sure that this bracket is nice and perpendicular to the bar too. You don't want this off to the side. And as you tighten it, it should kind of center itself up um, as it kind of makes its way. So I'm gonna just kind of uh, make sure that I evenly tighten as we go. And then we'll get this all snug down. So now I'm just gonna go through and torque these down properly. So now I'm just gonna go back with that three quarter inch and with my wrench, get these torqued down properly. But really other than that, that's gonna be the main portion of getting this installed. Now we may need to come back and do some fine tune adjusting once we're out driving, but this is really gonna do it. So it's a pretty easy install overall. And that was a look and installation of the Roadmaster at Zack Center steering stabilizer on a 2005 workhorse W series.